Hello and welcome to another Off the Shelf board game tutorial video. In this video I'll show you how to play Firefly the board game. Firefly the board game is a licensed property based off the TV show and the movie Serenity designed by Gale Force 9. It plays for one to four players and yes that does mean it does have a true solo one player scenario ages 13 and up and while the game does say the game plays in two hours that's extremely optimistic especially for your first couple plays with a four player game. Your first couple plays with a four player game, imagine this is probably gonna go closer to the four hour mark. And even once you're really experienced at this game, it's still gonna take over two hours on your average playthrough. Also, be sure to check out my full review of Firefly the game where I discuss the component quality, family friendliness, player count, and my final opinion of the game, and whether or not this game does continue to break the mold and the curse of terrible licensed properties made into board games. In Firefly the board game, each player gets to play one of the famous captains from the TV show Firefly, piloting a Firefly class starship across the verse. And if you're not familiar with the TV show Firefly, pretty much imagine Firefly as cowboys and Indians in space. And while it may sound kind of goofy, if you watch the show, it actually works out pretty darn well. And fitting with that thing, while I wouldn't say the players are necessarily bad guys, every player is pretty much the captain of a pretty much a desperado ship where you'll do pretty much any job for the right price as long as it's not breaking your morals too badly. You're going to have Alliance Space which is going to be protected by an Alliance Cruiser and then you're going to have the Outer Rim which is basically going to be patrolled with and you have to watch out for the Reavers. Now without giving away too much from the TV show if you haven't watched it yet, the Reavers are basically cannibals who are in space and just like to eat you. And I know if you're a fan of the show, what I just said is oversimplifying things, but I don't want to ruin this for anybody who ever plans on ever watching the show. It's an older show, but it's definitely one that's worth watching. Now at its heart, the Firefly board game is a scenario-based pickup and delivery game where you're going to pick a scenario at the beginning of the game, and it's going to tell you which objectives you need to complete to be the ultimate winner. Now most of these scenarios are going to be really fitting for anybody who's ever seen the show, and it's very extremely thematic, but basically they're going to come down to finding a crew, finding a job, and keep on flying. You're going to find a crew by basically visiting various planets that are going to allow you to access decks that match that planet and hire a crew on your ship. You're going to use that crew to try to complete jobs given to you by people who, let's just say they're not the salt of the earth, but they definitely have their own agendas. Each one of these contents will require you to go to a certain place, do a certain objective, complete an objective, and possibly go to another place for a final objective to get paid to make your money that you had to pay also to your crew. Firefly is a little more unique though in the fact that you're not going to roll dice for your movement, you're actually going to flip over cards for your movement. And what's going to happen to you is going to depend on what card you flip over, and it's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen depending on if you're flying around in Alliance space, or if you happen to be flying around in Reverse space. Of course, the jobs that are going to pay you the most money are going to require you to misbehave in some very interesting ways. If you succeed at misbehaving, you're going to get paid. But if you fail, you just might get a warrant for your arrest, which means you're going to be wanted by the Alliance Cruisers. Can you fly throughout the verse, avoid the dangers, avoid the reavers, complete your jobs given to you by your contacts, and also making sure you become solid with those contacts? That is Firefly the board game. Now unfortunately Firefly the game has a very very large blueprint and I can't get everything in the angle of my lens so there's going to be some things that are going to happen off the screen here but I'm definitely going to do my best to explain to you everything that's going on just so you understand exactly what is happening off the screen. At the start of the game you're going to shuffle up the navigation deck for the outer space. You're going to shuffle up the navigation deck for the alliance space. You're going to make sure you shuffle up each one of the contact decks, which is going to give you your missions or your objectives that you're going to be going through to get your money and get paid. And you're also going to shuffle up each one of your locations, which are going to look like this. And they have various different locations, like this is Silverhold, which is connected with the planet of Silverhold, or the planet Persephine deck, which is going to be affiliated with the planet Persephine. You also want to shuffle up the Misbehave deck. Now, the Misbehave deck is generally going to be used for your more lucrative jobs which have more questionable legalities associated with them. The legal jobs are the lowest paying jobs. They usually only pay maybe $600 up to $1,000, but your 
really highly criminal jobs are going to be the ones that can pay anywhere from three thousand four thousand all the way up to six thousand dollars for completing one job but again they're going to require the misbehave deck which is going to give you most of the challenge in the game i'm going to show you how to play a two-player game of firefly now the difference between a two three and a four player game isn't much difference these two decks can be slightly set up just ever so slightly different in a three and four player game not a big difference just showing you the two-player game for two reasons one, not much difference, and two, this game is very, very long. And if I would show you a complete four-player game, this video will probably go in a three-plus hour range, especially just me playing alone. To start off, each player needs to pick up a Firefly ship that they're going to control in the beginning of the game. Now, if you're first to pick your Firefly and first to pick your Captain, you're going to be last to place your ship on the board. And believe me when I say starting positioning in this game can be very, very important. Once each player has picked their starting ship and their starting captain, they're going to place their ship on the board. And these are all color coordinated. The Serenity gets the orange ship. And the Bonnie May gets the blue ship. Since these two are not used, they're going to be removed from the game. And you just make sure you put the Reaver where it starts in the Firefly symbol. And then the Alliance Cruiser starts around the planet of Londinium. Now while each one of the Firefly ships is exactly the same, they have the same amount of cargo hold, they're going to start with the exact same engine in the game, the difference in the startup is in the captains. Now every one of these captains plays ever so slightly differently. They all have their own special abilities and they also have their own starting skills. I'll explain skills in just a moment. Now each Firefly ship has enough room for only six crew on it, so you can never have more than six crew on your ship. And your starting captain does count as part of your crew. So you're going to have your captain plus five other crew members. Plus each ship can only have one engine. But you can always buy an upgraded engine by going to various planets. And upgrading your ship which costs you money. You can also get other upgrades on your ships. But you can never have more than three upgrades on your ship. So you're going to have one engine. And if you get a new engine you simply remove this one and replace it. And you have up to three extra slots which can be such things as sky hooks extra storage capacity and other nice bonuses for your ship and since this is a pickup and delivery game obviously your cargo space is going to be very important because you got to pick up cargo and deliver it now each one of your cargo pieces whatever it is you're going to put it on one of these squares and it's going to show exactly that it's occupied you can't have more than one thing on a certain space unless we're talking about fuel or parts and i'll get to those in just a second but you have your cargo you have your contraband you have your passengers and you have your fugitives and you have these many slots to fill them up. You also need to have fuel and parts for your ship for when you break down and also when you fly across the verse. Now each player is going to start with two parts and you notice that these are half size squares so you can actually put two in each square and you can even mix and match if you want. You can have a fuel and a cargo piece like this, it doesn't matter. And you have six fuel and two engine parts at the start of the game. And to buy more, fuel costs $100 and parts cost $300. So you got to make sure you keep a nice balance of because you need to have fuel to fly across the universe. And you also need to have parts in case your ship breaks down. Plus, you got to have enough cargo left over to transport your cargo, your fugitives, your passengers, and your contraband. And you only have so much space. So sometimes those upgrade slots, which are going to give you extra storage space, can be coming in very, very handy. Now the start of the game, everybody's going to start with six fuel, six parts, $3,000, one ship, and one captain. And just to be a little bit of a purist, I'm going to put Malcolm on the Serenity. And we'll go ahead and take, just for a little bit of variety, we'll take her, Nandy, as a captain of the Bonnie Mae. And we'll go ahead and take these captains. They'll be removed from the game because they will not be used at all. And each one of our ships has to start with a starting engine, which is going to be the five-speed and we're now ready to play the game for each single player. Each player needs to place their Firefly ship on the board somewhere. Now remember, if you're the first to pick a captain, you're going to be last to place your ship. So last person to place their, pick their captain and gets to be the first one to place their ship. And we'll go ahead and start Malcolm with a Serenity in the Space Bazaar, which is going to allow them to also pick up some more jobs. And then we'll go ahead and put the Bonnie May right here in Badger's territory and Persephine, where they can start picking up some crew. Every time you play the game, you need to make sure you do pick up a scenario. So we're going to go ahead and pick the basic scenario called the King of All Londinium. Now the rules, they tell you this is the scenario that you should use to teach the game. And I'll say sure if you want a three and a half to four hour game the first time you play, especially with four players. So I highly, highly recommend you go to Gale Force 9's website and download the free scenario that's available. 
it's going to take about an hour and a half to play this scenario because it cuts everything down but does a great job of teaching you how to play the game for first time players then once you're familiar with the game go ahead and move on to the scenarios that actually come with it i can't recommend highly enough that before you play the game for the first time you go ahead and download that free scenario because it's going to play much quicker and still give you an idea of how to play firefly the game Now before we go any further, I need to explain to you how to do skill tests on this game. Skill tests are the major challenge and the most random thing that's going to be added to the game besides your movement, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But skill challenges are basically how you're going to do things such as misbehave and complete those jobs which are going to give you the big payouts. There's three different kinds of skill tests in the game. There's the fighting skill test, which is represented by a little gun which is on a red background. There are the tech skill tests, which is a wrench on a blue background. And finally, you have the negotiate skill test, which is a little chat bubble with a Japanese word symbol inside it over a green background. And every one of these skill tests is going to have a minimum level that you got to reach to succeed at them. And if you don't reach that level, it's going to tell you what happened. There can be various levels of success. Roll really high, you're going to do really good. Roll okay, you may do somewhat okay. Roll miserably, fail miserably. Now, all these skill tests are going to be resolved with a roll of a D6. Now this D6 is numbered 1 through 5, and the 6th face is a Firefly symbol on it. Now the Firefly is there because it represents that this game uses an exploding die. And what exploding die means, if you roll anything except the Firefly, you take the phase value. If you take the Firefly, it represents 6, and then you roll the die again and add what you got the prior turn. So if you roll a second Firefly, you know 6 plus 6 is 12. You roll it a third time, and if you happen to get a third Firefly, you're now up to 18. And if you roll it again, you're going to add the final roll to what you get. So we have three Fireflies for a total of 18 plus 3 is 21. That would be our final skill test result. And honestly, that was a one in a million kind of roll situation. The highest difficulty off the top of my head, I think, is a 12 or 13 in this misbehaved deck. So that pretty much was succeeded in just about any roll in the game. Normally you're not going to roll that well, so that's where the skills of your crew are going to come in handy and why you want to hire a good crew with a lot of widespread on the skills so they handle just about any situation. Every single crew member, including the captain of your ship, is going to have symbols representing how many bonuses they get to each roll. And every time that symbol pops up, it's going to be plus one for each symbol. Now Malcolm is plus one to negotiate. He also happens to be plus two to any fight test. You know this because he has two guns written down. Now if you start hiring crew, such as if you had Zoe, she's going to give you two more guns to any kind of your fight test, plus her special ability, but I don't get into that yet. So any roll that I roll, if they're part of my crew, I'm going to get plus four if it's a fight test. But if it's a tech or negotiate test, I'm only going to plus one to negotiate and no bonuses to tech, so that's why you want to try to hire people. That'll give you a bonus to tech. So if I have these three people in my crew, I have a plus three to any tech test plus one to any negotiate test, and plus four to any fight test. I'm going to add that to whatever I roll. So if I'm doing a fight test, it's two, plus two, plus two is six. If this was a negotiate test, it would be two plus one is three. And if this was a tech test, it would be two plus three is a total of five. So this is why you want to do stuff like add weapons to your crew members, and also just make sure you keep hiring a variety of crew members so they can cover all the skills. Now the trick to this is you can never have more than six people on your crew and that includes your captain. So right here we already have four crew members so we can only have two more on our ship. And additionally, each crew member, unless they have a special ability, can only be equipped with one weapon at a time. Now you can have more than six weapons on your ship. It's just that every time you take a job you have to say who is going to be equipped with which weapon and no person can have more than one weapon equipped to them unless they're, you know, somebody has a special ability. And a good example of that is Jane. He can actually equip three weapons, but it says that specifically right on his card. So for every single skill check, you're simply going to roll a die, add in all the bonuses for your entire crew and all their equipment based on the skill test you're going to do. So you got to look for negotiate symbols for negotiate test, tech symbol for your tech test, and again, the fight symbol for all your fighting tests. Add the total bonuses to whatever you roll, compare it to what you need to make, and it's going to tell you on your card how high a roll you need to make. And that's going to tell you if you pass or if you fail the skill challenge. Now some skill challenges are going to have special additional things that are going to be added to them such as a kosherized test means that you cannot use any weapons because that just won't be fair because it's basically a barroom brawl. 
And you may also find some skill challenges that say bribe. Now anytime it says bribe, you are allowed to add exactly plus one to your roll for every hundred dollars you spend because you're basically trying to bribe your way through the skill challenge. Other than that, most of your skill challenges are basically roll the die and just compare your results to get your total. Now on a player's turn, you have an option of up to four things you can do on your turn, but you can only take two of those options each turn and you can't repeat the same thing twice. Now your options on your turn is you can fly, you can try to buy, you can try to deal with your contacts, or you can try to work a job. Now you do two of those four things, you just can't do the same thing twice, so you can't use the fly action twice but you could work and then fly, or fly and work, or you can deal with the contact and then buy at the same time, especially if you happen to be on a space like this one that allows you to actually contact and do buying at the same space. So I can do both my actions. One action, go visit Amandul, and then my second action, I go to the Space Bazaar and buy gear, hire some extra crew members, and possibly improve my spaceship by buying extra things with my money that I made. Now if you decide on your turn to take the fly action, you have two options. One, you can move one single space, and you'll notice that all these spaces are connected. Most of them are pretty obvious where you can go to. Here to here, here to here, here to here. It's usually pretty obvious where you can go to. There may be one or two that may make you question, but most of them are pretty darn obvious. This single space movement is called moseying along. It doesn't cost you any fuel. It doesn't cost you anything. It just uses your fly action to move exactly one space. Now your other option, and the most optimal option, is to spend one fuel, and you simply will take that fuel and burn it and then you, what you're going to do is you're going to do what's called a full burn. Now with a full burn action you can move up to as many spaces as your range on your engine says. Now all the basic engines give you a max move of five but there are some engines that allow you to go up to six and some of them that only allow you to four but they have their own special little bonuses for the restriction of moving less spaces. So what you do is you discard a fuel from your board and you say I'm doing a full burn and then you announce which space you're going to be moving into. And this is where the navigation, or nav for short deck, comes in. Now there's two nav decks. There's the alliance space nav deck, which is for any movement in alliance space. You can tell where alliance space is because the lines are separated by an off lighter blue color. And then you have your border space, which is anything that's not blue. It's kind of this whitish color right here. And that's where you're going to move when you're in the border space. So anytime you make a move in border space, you're going to draw a border space card. Anytime you make a move in alliance space, you're going to draw an alliance card. So you draw a card from the space you're moving into. So for example, right now I'm in border space, but if I want to move into alliance space, I would say I'm going to do a full burn, discard one fuel, and then I'm going to move, and then I will draw the top card from the alliance space deck. I'm going to do what it says, and it's going to give me up one of three different options. It'll either say keep flying, which means I can announce the next space I want to move into, flip the card, and then do what it says. It may tell me to keep flying and then if I does I will just keep flying where I want to go. And then if I decide to move back into border space I am more than welcome to but I will draw a border space card because that's the space I've entered. Now these cards can give you two other results besides keep flying. The first one is going to be full stop which means no matter how many movement you have left you must stop moving immediately. Even if it was just your first movement on your full burn if you flipped a card that said full stop you would have to stop moving immediately and you can no longer move. Your move will be done at that point. The third result you may get is an evade option. Now what evade means is you're going to get one more movement but your movement is over. Anytime you get an evade, for example if I was here and I moved into this space and I flipped the card over and it told me that I had to evade, what I do is I move one more space and it has to be an adjacent space, doesn't matter. I'd move there and my movement would be over. Even if I had range left on my drive core, I'd have to stop moving and my movement phase would be over. Now these nav decks are going to also tell you to do things like move the Alliance cruiser occasionally if you're flying through Alliance space. And sometimes if you're flying through border space, they're going to tell you to move the reaver ship. Now if you happen to be flying around border space and a car moves the reaver ship onto your ship like this, you're basically going to be attacked by reavers most likely lose crew and have very bad things happen to you. And if you're flying around Alliance space and Alliance cruisers move to your space, you're going to have to, well it depends on if you are an outlaw ship or not. If you currently have any warrants for your arrest, if you're currently carrying any contraband, or if you're currently carrying any fugitives, or if you have crew members who have warrants for arrest, 
you're currently an outlaw ship. If you don't meet any of that criteria, you're not an outlaw ship, and you're actually pretty safe if the Alliance vessel lands in your space. Most of the time, though, you're going to be an outlaw ship. And while the Alliance ship isn't too terrible land on that space, they're basically going to cost you $1,000 for every single warrant that you have happen to have issued for you at that time, they're also going to potentially remove crew members from your ship permanently from the game if they have warrants from their arrest and you have to be pretty terrible with a dice roll and roll a one. The next action you can do on your turn is if you happen to be on a space that is on a planet where you make purchases from, you'll simply pull out the deck where that planet is, for example if you're at Persephine, and you get to consider three cards to buy and you can buy up to two cards of the three you can consider. Now a nice thing about this is you can consider cards that are in the discard pile or you can do a blind draw from the top of the deck. And you get to take up to three cards, it can be three cards from the draw deck or if there happens to be a discard pile you can rifle through the entire discard pile, pick two or three cards that you like, or simply take one card from the discard pile and then take your chances by grabbing the next two on the draw pile. You're going to look at the three cards that pop up, decide which one, two, or zero that you want to keep, and the ones you don't keep are simply going to go back to the discard pile for anybody else to have a chance to get, and the ones you do keep you have to pay for, and the cost will be in the lower right hand corner in purple. Now remember, visiting planets is the way you're going to get extra crew on your ship. It's going to way you're going to upgrade your ship, and it's going to be the way you're going to equip your, your gear on your crew by buying guns, buying extra stuff, and stuff that's going to make your crew just much more efficient. Now you can also, instead of shopping at the planet, you can decide to take some shore leave for your crew. Anytime your crew is disgruntled, and I'll explain that to you in just a moment here, anytime your crew is disgruntled, you can pay $100 for every crew member aboard your ship, it doesn't matter if one or two of them are disgruntled. You have to pay $100 for every crew member. So if you have six crew and only one of them is disgruntled, it's going to cost you $600 to remove that disgruntled state from that crew member. But if you decide to not buy, you can remove the disgruntled status from everybody on your ship, which is definitely going to be a bonus because if your crew gets disgruntled, you have a chance of losing them. The next thing you can do on your turn is you can deal with contacts. If you happen to be out of space where one of your contacts lives, Amundul lives here, or Niska lives over here, Patience is here, etc. There are five different contacts in the game. Anytime you're at a location with a contact, you can simply look at their deck and then choose to take one of their jobs. Now, this is exactly like purchasing from a planet. If there's cars in the discard pile, you can always go through the discard pile and pick out up to three jobs that you may like, or you can take your chances with the top draw deck. You get to take up to three jobs, consider two of them up to two of them to keep and then the third one must be discarded to the discard pile. Now here's the trick, you can never have more than three, gar three cards with jobs total from all your contacts with jobs you have not started and you can never have more than three jobs total that you've actually started already. So at any time you can never have more than six jobs, three you're currently working and three jobs you're still considering, holding in your hand that you can start at any time. Now since the job cards are the heart of the game, I'm going to take a few moments to describe to you just how they work. There's two different kinds of jobs in the game. There are legal jobs, and I'll say in the upper right hand corner legal. There's also illegal jobs, which will be in red, and I'll say illegal. There's also a third kind of job, which is called immoral jobs, which you're going to get a lot of those from Niska, because he's just not a nice guy. It'll say right underneath will be illegal and immoral. Now the difference between an immoral job and a non-immoral job is you'll notice some of your crew members, especially some of your captains, are going to have morals, which means they will not take an immoral job very happily. Anytime they have to do a job that's immoral, and if you decide to do it, they're going to become disgruntled. And that's where those disgruntled tokens come in I was talking about a moment ago. Now disgruntled tokens are pretty bad. If a person ever gets a second disgruntled token on them, if they're the leader or the captain of your ship, they fire the entire crew, which is going to be really terrible for you, because you can have a really great crew. If you get that second disgruntled token, guess what? You just lost your entire crew. They all go back to where you found them from. If you are not a captain of a ship, if you're just a simple, normal crew member, the moment you get one disgruntled token on you, that means if any other player enters your space, they can actually buy this person off your ship by giving them promises of better riches if you come join their team. And if they ever get a second disgruntled token, doesn't matter where they are on the board, they're immediately going to leave your crew and they're going to go back to their card, back to their planet where they come from. So that's one of the risks you got to consider every time you take a job. If you have a lot of crew members with morals, 
You may want to try to avoid these immoral jobs. Even though they have a tendency to pay a lot, you'll see 4000 versus 1500 versus 2000 versus 2000 Now, they may pay a lot, but you take a lot of risk by taking those immoral jobs. Next on every single job, it's going to tell you possibly a need, and it's also going to tell you a possible final action you have to take to complete the job. Now, if it says it has a need, that means you cannot start this job unless your crew contains at least that many symbols. So if my crew was only Malcolm at this moment, I could not start this job because I need at least two wrenches versus a crew member to even start this job. So if I had Simon Tam as part of my crew now, since he has two wrenches, which gives me the minimum two wrenches to start this job, I can actually start this job. Now to start a job, you need to work it, which is the work in a job action. Now every single job is going to tell you exactly where it starts, what you need to do, and where it finishes. Now this one right here says you're going to go to Murphy, which is the system, and it's also going to tell me that I need to go to Harris. So I need to go all the way over to this section right here, start, or just come all the way over to this place, and then once I'm there, I'm going to start the job. Now to start this job, this one's easy. I'm going to take the work action, and I'm going to load two cargo aboard my ship. You simply take the two cargo, place it on your ship, make sure you have enough hold on it, and now you start this job. Now, to finish this job, it tells me I need to deliver this cargo and get paid. Now, to get paid, I need to fly from here all the way to Lux, which is in Persephine, which is this planet here. I need to fly all the way over here. If I manage to do that without losing my cargo to something bad happening, I will simply discard the cargo, and then I will get paid however much this job is going to pay. Here's the trick though, my crew wants to be paid for every single job I do. So while this job pays 1500 if I happen to have Simon Tam aboard my ship, he also wants to be paid 200 for being part of my crew during this job. So my total net is going to be 1300 because your captain does need pay, just your crew member. So I've managed to put $1,300 back into my money pool. Once the job is completed, you're going to flip it over to show that you're now solid with that contact. And being solid is going to give you some extra benefits. And depending on what scenario you're playing, it may make you come even closer to winning the game. Now, some jobs are going to give you an extra bonus, and they'll say in the lower left-hand corner, it says, for example, this one says grifter bonus. If I happen to have a grifter as part of my crew, and you know what somebody is because it tells you what it is right here. This person's a grifter, this person's a medic, this person's a pilot, and a soldier. If I have this grifter aboard my crew, I get to pay an extra $500 for completing this job, so I'd be paid a total of 2500 but out of that, I need to pay my crew, so out of 2500 I have to pay 400 to my crew. I get to pocket $2,100. Now, not all jobs are going to be as simple as picking up some stuff, flying across the board, and dropping stuff out of, at a location. Some jobs are going to require you to misbehave. Now, the way misbehaving works is you're going to look at a card that's going to have these symbols on the back, which are going to represent the misbehave deck. And you need to pass as many cards as it shows here to complete whatever it tells you to do. So for me to finish this job, I need to have a success at least three misbehave cards. Now if you get through two of the cards successfully, and then on the third card you happen to fail, as long as it doesn't say a warrant has been given for your arrest, you have to start this job all over again. So even though I had two successes, they're going to be discarded. And then on the next turn when I work the job, I'm going to have to go through three cards again Hopefully I make it through all three. If I only make it through one, my turn's going to be wasted. The other cards are going to be discarded. And again, I need to work the job again, trying to get through three cards successfully by making the skill challenges. And if I happen to get through all three of the cards, which is a requirement for this one, it's going to say I'm going to get paid. Some cards are going to have additional things on it, like to really get paid fully, I need to go through three misbehaved cards, and I need to succeed in a fight check. If I fail the fight check, one of my crew members is going to die while I'm working the job. If I succeed the job, which is an 8 or higher, which would be requiring me to roll the die, add in any fight I might have, so this would be a 4. I have 2 fight here, total of 6, so I wouldn't quite do it, so I'd have to actually kill somebody aboard my ship because I failed that. I'd still get paid $4,000 minus 200 because I have to pay the surviving crew members. So the basic flow of Firefly is you're going to be flying around, going to the planets to hire better crew, to improve your chances of succeeding at the missions, improving your ship, getting better weapons, getting gear, and getting stuff that's going to help you complete the jobs and the tasks that are given to you by your contacts. Your contacts are going to give you jobs which are going to pay you, and they're going to give you special bonuses and money, which is the biggest thing that you're going to really need. 
And then you're going to take all that money and work on trying to figure it out and finish the goals for the game. Now each one of these goal cards are going to require you to do something specific and once you manage to complete that goal, you're going to get a goal token and you can't lose it. So even if, for example, it tells you to make $10,000, once you've done that, you complete that goal and if you drop below $10,000, you don't lose this goal. Once the goal is completed, it's completed. And most of them are going to require you to complete three goals. Once you've completed the third goal, you are the winner of the game. I think I've explained to you pretty much enough for you to understand how to play Firefly the game. I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up, set up the game for a sample two-player game, and show you just how Firefly the game plays. But before I do that, I just want to mention one more thing I failed to mention. When you become solid with a contact, they're going to give you some special abilities, which is going to be on the back of a card. If you're ever working a job for that contact, and you're solid with him already, if you're ever working at a job for them and you fail at a job and you get a warrant issued for your arrest, you lose your solid status with that contact and you need to get solid with them again. To do so, you just need to succeed at a job and once you succeed at a job for them, you become solid with them again and you place that under your board to let you know that you're solid with them again. Here's the trick though. Once a job has been completed, it cannot be completed ever again by any player. So as soon as you manage to complete a job, you are going to basically put it underneath your card, underneath your shipboard to let you know it's completed. And if it makes you solid, you're going to have it stick out just a little bit so you know that you're solid with that contact. Nobody else can ever complete that job ever again. But if you're working a job and you fail it, it's going to be returned to that contact's draw pile or discard pile so other people can have an attempt to try to finish that job. A lot of this is going to make much more sense when I show you how to play the game, so I'm just going to go in and clean everything up and show you that sample game. I have the game set up for a two-player game right now, and I have the decks primed, which means that three de cards are going to start off in the discard pile for the contacts, which means the players know some of the jobs are available in the beginning of the game. There's also going to be three cards in the discard pile for each one of the various planets where you can go shopping for supplies. Again, that's so players have an idea of stuff they can get in the beginning of the game or at least give you some goals or objectives in the beginning of the game. Now we're going to play the scenario that's actually a downloadable scenario I told you about that's called First Time in the Captain's Chair. Now this one is set up just a little bit differently from the basic game. And this one you actually only start with two jobs with, with each captain instead of the three you'd actually normally start with. So that's why each one of us is only starting with two jobs, and we actually don't get to pick our jobs that we get them from. We get one job from Omnon Duel and one job for Harkin for each one of our captains to start this game. Now this is a really thematic game, and I'd be remiss if I didn't help immerse inside the theme. So the way this job works is it says, first time in the captain's chair. So you finally took the plunge and borrowed enough credits for a ship to call your own. You're the master of your destiny, and right now that destiny looks mighty uncertain. You're in debt up to your eyeballs with a creditor that's not the sort of man to be trifled with. Now our first goal for this, and we have to complete this before we move on to the second or third goal, the first thing we need to do is we need to become solid with two of our contacts. Thematically, we're getting a name and we're getting a reputation as somebody who can handle jobs. So the first thing we need to do is we need to complete... The goal number one, which is it can become solved with any two of the contacts available of the five. Once we do that, we're going to move on to the second goal, which is what we need to do is we need to make $6,000, have it in hand, and after we manage to get $6,000 in our hand, we automatically complete goal number two. So it's quite possible to complete goal one and goal two very quickly. Now, they're not automatic. You have to actually work them, which it takes a work action. But if you do, you'll get a goal token and a goal token for number two. Finally, the third one is we got to go feed the shark, which means we got to go feed the loan shark who gave us our loan for our first firefly. Now, that loan shark happens to be over here on Ezra, which is in the Georgia solar system. So as soon as we complete the first goal of getting solid, complete the second goal of making 6000 and then fly all the way to Ezra with $6,000 in hand, do a work action and complete the third goal, we're going to win the game. Now player one is Captain Womack flying the Bonnie Mae, and they're going to go first. They have two jobs. The first job requires them to have two and negotiate, and unfortunately, since we don't have that yet, we can't start our first job. But we do have another one that requires two and fighting, which we do happen to have on Captain Womack. So we're going to go ahead and start working towards our first job. 
But since we happen to be at a nice location, why don't we go ahead and take advantage of that and we can either meet with a contact or we can go to the Space Bazaar. Now the Space Bazaar right now is actually primed with three cards which actually look pretty darn decent. It would be nice to have a nice captain, but he's got morals. And we're not really a captain who's got a lot of morals, so we try to avoid those kind of people on our team. So we know we don't want him. It'd be nice to have this nice hacking rig, which it gives us an automatic wrench, which will allow us to work on some of the tougher quests, which might be good, but it costs us $1,000. And the crybaby's nice, but I don't think we're going to need that early in the game. So I think we're going to bypass the Space Bazaar, ignore it, and we're going to go visit Omnon Duel. For our first action, we're going to go visit a contact. So to visit Omnon Duel, we're going to look at the three jobs that are in the discard pile right now and see if any of them are jobs that we can do that we might want to start. Now this job right here is a great one right here because we can start it because it's right here in this location. So that's one job we may want to consider. These other two jobs aren't jobs that I think we want to take this early in the game so we're going to go ahead and put them back in the discard pile. And since we're allowed to consider three jobs, we're going to take two more from the discard pile and we have a total of three jobs to look forward. Now this one pays pretty darn well, but it's going to cause us to burn fuel a lot faster. And fuel's kind of not something we can afford in the beginning of the game to start blowing away. And this job right here requires guns and mechanics. Now we have the gun skill of two, but we don't have two mechanic skill. So we can't start that job, so I don't think we're going to take that one. So we are going to end up taking this job right here. And now that we have three jobs, we can't take any more jobs. For our second action, we are going to go ahead and actually work that job we just got. And it says Homesteader Transport. What it says is we start the job in the zone or the location we actually, can actually happen to be right now, the Space Bazaar. So we're going to go ahead and work it. And what this one does is we need at least two guns, which we have. And we get to load up as many passengers as we want. And if we get these passengers all the way over to Georgia, we're going to get 300 credits per passenger we load up. So since this is going to pay pretty darn well and we don't have a lot of problems with warrants or anything like that, we are going to go ahead and load the ship up full with all these passengers because they're going to give us 300 credits for every single person we manage to drag across the universe. We want to make sure that we don't actually don't overload our ship because we want to have enough room to get this job right here, which since we have a special ability is actually going to pay us 1,400 credits, which is actually a good one to keep. And that's our two actions for the turn. One action was to find a job. The second action was to actually start a job. So Womack's turn is over. We now have one job we started, two jobs we still have to consider. Now for Malcolm's turn, Malcolm wants to go ahead and interact with Silverhold right now. So he's going to spend his first action to go ahead and go shop in Silverhold. Now there's currently three cards available in Silverhold that are available. And we could, instead of considering these, we could flip over some cards, but I actually like these two cards right here. And since we can only get two of the three cards, we can go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and consider our third card because we always do get three cards. And now my options are I get two of these three cards. I think we're gonna go ahead and take Zoe because it seems natural for Zoe to be part of the Firefly Serenity. And I think we're going to go ahead and take Jane also. So those will be our two cards we're going to consider. And now we need to pay them to make them join our crew. So that's going to be 300 plus 300. We have to spend $600. And they will go ahead and join our crew. So we spend the $600. We discard that money. And now these two people have joined our crew and we now can get three more crew members because our ship can't hold more than six crew members. Now we have two jobs, and one of them we can't start working until we get some tech skill. And since we don't have anybody aboard our ship who can do that, we're going to go ahead and actually fly to the Space Bazaar. Because in the Space Bazaar, there happens to be two people with tech skills, or two cars with tech skills that we can use. We can hire ourselves a pilot, and we can also pick up the hacking rig, which will allow us to actually start our first job. So that's our objective right now. We are actually going to go ahead and fly, so we're going to do a full burn, which costs us one fuel. We're going to discard the fuel. And then we're going to go ahead and move. And remember, we can move up to five spaces because we have the basic engine, which allows us to move a range of five. So we'll go ahead and move the first space right here, which will be in border space. We'll flip over the first border card. It says keep flying so nothing bad is going to happen to us. We'll go to alliance space, which will be our second move. And we'll get a card right here that says 
Player to your right must move the Alliance cruiser one sector with an Alliance space and keep flying. This player would get the chance to move the Alliance cruiser. They're going to go ahead and move it away from where their eventual goal is. So they're going to move it one space like this. Back to Malcolm flying the Serenity. He's going to move his third space right here in Alliance space. Card says keep flying so nothing's going to happen to us. And then we're going to move our final into this space right here which is going to be border space. We're going to flip over a card. It says keep flying so nothing bad happens to us at all. We move it a total of four spaces. And that's our second action. We've now ended our turn. We now go back to Womack's turn. Womack is going to go ahead and consider the Space Bazaar for his first action before he flies off. His ob objective is he's going to want to fly this planet right here so we can actually start a second job. We're going to look at three cars to consider and see what we get here. A pilot so is nice because we don't have a pilot just yet. And we have two pilots here. Neither one of them have morals, which is always a good thing for Womack because he doesn't have a lot of morals. We also have Fancy Duds, which is nice. Gives us an extra negotiate action or skill for free, which is kind of nice. So we could spend $1,000, get ourselves a pilot, and get us some gear, which we're going to go ahead and do. We'll go ahead and put the nice bow tie right on top of Womack himself. He's going to go and wear that bow tie for now. And then we'll hire our pilot. All this will cost us a total of $1,000. Now before we take our second action with Womack, which is the fly, we're going to finish off our buy by spending 100 extra dollars just to buy one fuel token. Now the reason why we don't buy more than that is because we need the extra space for what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working a second job here very quickly. So that's going to end our buy action because that was part of original buy action was buying the crew, buying the nice fancy duds, and buying the fuel for Womack's ship. That's the end of his first action. We now move to a section action which is going to be a full move, which is a full burn. He needs to go from Amundul and the Space Bazaar all the way to this planet of Sinnoh just to start his job of forced settler relocation. We're going to initiate the full burn by spending the fuel we just purchased. And then we're going to move one space into Alliance space. We're going to flip over the Alliance card. And we're going to get a two options here. We can either attempt a mechanical tech skill check which says if we get a 1 through 6, well, we're going to come to a full stop. If we get a 7 or higher, we're going to keep flying. Well, if we look at our current people, we have a board our crew. We only have one wrench total, so that means I need to roll a 6 on this to manage to keep flying. Or what I can do is I can do the second option, which is spend one part fixing whatever broke on our ship, and then we can keep flying. Well, we don't want to give up our turn this easily or this soon because if I am forced to stop, my turn's going to be over because this is my second action, which was movement, and I actually burned the fuel to get this far. be a complete waste, so we're going to go ahead and spend the one part. We're going to remove the one part from our board, and this action will be done, and then we're going to keep on flying and head to the second movement. We're going to flip the card over. We're going to get a result of keep flying, which is definitely good. We're going to go to the third section we want to move to. Turn over the card, and it says... Player to your left gets to move the Alliance Cruiser. Keep on flying if you want to. So the person who is Malcolm's player gets to control this ship. And they know that the player of Womack is a pretty immoral guy, so we're going to try to go ahead and block him since he's kind of a dirty, low-down rat. So we're going to move this cruiser closer to Womack's player, hoping we're going to cause him some problems. Now Womack still has two more movement he could take if he wanted to, but this is as far as he wants to get because he actually wants to start a job on his next turn. So he's going to end his turn, and now it's going to be time for Malcolm to take his turn. Now the start of Malcolm's turn, he flew all the way to the Space Bazaar for one reason, and one reason only. He needed to hire some people to put on his crew. So our first action is we're going to go shopping at the Space Bazaar, and we have four cards to consider. And if we don't like any of those cards, of course, we can always take cards from the top of the draw pile, the difference depending on how many cards we actually want to take. Now we actually are running a little bit low on funds because we spent $600 to hire some crew last turn. But a hacking rig is a very nice item to have and so is a pilot to have. So I'm pretty sure we're actually going to take these two cards and I'm not even going to take the risk because I know those are the two cards we want. So we're going to spend $1,200 and we're going to finally get a pilot and we're going to get a hacking rig. We're going to spend the $1,200 to add those to our ship. That's going to be our first full action, doing all that stuff. 
Additionally, we're also going to spend a little bit of money since we're shopping right now to buy some fuel. We're going to spend 200 and we're going to go ahead and get some fuel, add that to our ship because we definitely have the cargo hold for it right now. And it's always a good idea to have a little bit of fuel. Then we're going to go ahead and add these things to our ship, putting us at a total of four crew members of the total of six we can have. But now we have the crew members we need to start the job we wanted to start which require two tech symbols and now we have that because our pilot has one and the hacking rig we have gives us the second one so now for our second action we need to fly to where this job starts and it starts in the red sun sector which is where we're at and it's going to start on the planet of Greenleaf. Now Greenleaf is right here which is one space away and since it's one space away there's no reason for us to do a full burn and waste the fuel so we'll just do our one fly action fly to Greenleaf that'll end our turn and on the next turn, we can go ahead and work our job. Now it's back to Womack's turn. Now we're back to Womack's turn, and Womack is going to go ahead and start the job, Forced Settler Relocation. Now this isn't a moral job, but Womack doesn't have problems with that, so he's going to go ahead and start this job. Now to start this job, we need to have at least two gun skill, and Womack actually does that all by himself, so it's no problem for him to start it. And it says to do this job, we need to load two passengers and one cargo. So we'll load the one cargo and two more passengers and we'll go ahead and load those aboard our ship and now we have actually started this job we did a work action which is our first action for the turn and now all we got to do is we need to drop these things off over here in Murphy and if we do that we're going to get paid nine hundred dollars plus if we have a soldier aboard our ship which we do because Womack is a soldier we're going to get an extra three hundred and since it's an immoral job and Womack gets a bonus anytime he does an immoral job. He's going to get an extra $500 for doing this job. So this job is going to pay him a total of $1,700 just to fly over here and deliver a couple of goods. So for our second action, we are going to go ahead and initiate a full burn. So we will discard a fuel token. And we're going to go ahead and move through Alliance Space. And we need to get over here to Aphrodite to complete this job that we just started. So we will move one space. Flip over the Alliance card. It says keep flying. Our second space... It says keep flying. Our third space. It says keep flying. Our fourth space. Alliance Cruiser is going to move one space. Malcolm's player is going to go ahead and move it right here. And then finally we're going to move to our fifth space, which is going to be in border space. We need to flip over one of the Reaver border cards. And this one says that we are going to either have to do a salvage operation, load two cargo, do a full stop, unfortunately we don't have enough room for that or we can keep on flying but this is our fifth move so we can't keep flying either way but luckily if we rearrange actually we can't pick up two so we're not even gonna bother doing that so that's gonna be the end of that we did two actions we started a job and we flew that's our two actions that player's turn is over and now it's back to Malcolm's turn for Malcolm's turn he's in the spot he wants to be to go ahead and start the job the job required him to be in Greenleaf and he needs to have at least two tech tokens, thanks to his pilot and to the hacking rig. We see we have two, so we can go ahead and start this job, no problem at all. So we'll take a work action to start this job, and it says load two passengers and two parts aboard your ship. We definitely have room for that. We will load up the two passengers on our ship. and the two parts on board our ship. And that is our first action. We have now started the job, so our second action is to go ahead and fly. We're gonna go ahead and spend one fuel to do a full burn. And we actually wanna pick up a second job on the way because this job requires us to go all the way over here to Hare and Murphy. So we might as well stop by Londinium on the way and start our second job because we gotta be as efficient as we can with our moves. Otherwise, the other player's gonna get ahead of us and get solid with more contacts quicker than we can. Luckily, we can get to Londinium in one movement just as long as the cards are in our favor. We spent the fuel, so let's go ahead and take our move into border space. And we are going to get a bad card right here. It says a rogue trader is going to come up on us. We have two options. If we have a moral crew and we do this, they're going to be to come disgruntled, but we're basically going to become pirates, which I don't think we're going to do because most of my crew has morals right now. So the other thing we can do is you may buy fuel and parts or contraband and then keep on flying well we met the rogue trader I don't think we're gonna spend the money because we don't have a lot of money left as it is and we're just gonna keep on flying 
So we're going to take our second move into Alliance Space. Keep on Flying card. Our third movement. Keep on Flying card. Our fourth movement. Keep on Flying card. Not a problem. And then our final fifth movement into Londinium, which is where we want to start our next turn. And we're going to see that the other player gets to move the Alliance Cruiser. They're going to go ahead and move the Alliance Cruiser out of their way because they plan on doing some bad things eventually, and it's just in their way right now. That's going to be the end of Malcolm's turn. He did two actions. One, he started the job. And the second action he did is he flew all the way to Londinium. So we now have a job we've started, and we've done both of our actions. This player's turn is now over. It's now Womack's turn, and he only needs to go to this space right here, so there's no reason to burn fuel. He's just going to do a Mosey action, which allows him to move one space. He doesn't have to draw a card because he did a Mosey action. So he did one action was movement. Now his second action is going to be to work this job. The job says that he just has to go to Aphrodite and Murphy, and it says deliver two passengers and one cargo. Two passengers and one cargo are going to be delivered, and then he goes and gets paid for doing what he did. So now we got to figure out how much we get paid for this. We're going to get paid the basic $900 for doing the job. Plus, since we have a soldier, and if you look down at Malcolm or Womack, we see that he is a soldier. So he's going to get the soldier bonus for doing this job. So it's $900 plus $300 is $1,200. Plus, Womack has a special ability saying heartless. Anytime he does an immoral job, no matter what kind of job it is, if it says it's immoral, he's going to get a bonus of $500. So for doing this job, Womack is going to get a total of $1,700, 9 plus 3 plus 5. But out of that, he needs to pay his pilot $200. So he's going to get a total of $1,500 for just doing that little bit of work, flying across the verse, and making a little bit of cash. This job is now complete, and now we're now solid with Harkin, which gives us the ability that any time we're at the Alliance Cruiser space, as long as we don't have a warrant for arrest, as long as we stay solid with Harkin, we buy fuel for $100 on any space this ship happens to be on. Plus, we're now solid with one person. Now remember, the requirement for the first goal to complete is we have to get solid with two people. We're halfway there to completing the first goal for this player. That was two actions. One was the move. The second was to work the job. Womack's turn is over. We're now back to Malcolm. On Malcolm's turn, we're going to go ahead and take a work action. We're going to go ahead and start this job right here. It's a legal job, and it says to start this job, we just have to be in this planet, Londinium, in the White Sun sector. We load up two cargo aboard our ship. We definitely have room for two cargo, so that's not going to be a problem at all. And we've now officially started this job because it doesn't have any requirements. It's actually a very easy job to do. It doesn't pay a lot, but it's definitely an easy job. And it's actually going to require us to fly all the way back here to Red Sun. Well, unfortunately, we're flying the other direction because we want to work this other job, which is going to pay us $1,500 which is a lot better than measly $900, and we definitely need at least $6,000 to buy off our spaceship from our Lone Shark. So to finish our job, we need to deliver two passengers and two parts all the way to Hera. Luckily, we can do this in one move as long as we don't get any cards that stop us from doing it. So for our second action, we're going to go ahead and take a full burn. We're going to go ahead and burn the fuel off the Serenity, and we're going to go ahead and move one space in Alliance space. Keep flying one space in Alliance space and it says we can either spend one fuel and come to a full stop and remove disgruntled from all our moral cruel and take $200 for answering a distress signal or we can keep moving and all our moral crew are going to become disgruntled because they're not going to like the fact that we just ignored a distress signal when we're supposed to be semi good guys heck we're aboard the serenity we're not the bad guys like nasty old Womack over here so this is a really tough decision for us. We can either stop flying, end our movement, which would end our turn, and make a little bit of money and, you know, keep our crew happy, but it's going to cost us a fuel, unfortunately. Or we can say, screw the crew, let all the moral people get a little disgruntled, which is, we've got three moral crew, which isn't good, but at least we get to keep flying. Right now, stopping flying is not so bad because we're actually on Osiris, which is a place where we can actually buy stuff so it may not actually be a bad idea to just come to an end right here, especially since we don't take all that hit on our moral and make everybody disgruntled. So we're going to go ahead and end it. We're going to have to spend that fuel because that's what it requires. At least we're going to get a whole $200 out of it. Whoop-de-doo. 
but at least our crew is happy and that was our second action unfortunately so this is going to end our turn now we get to go back to Womack Womack is busy laughing at the whole bleeding heart of my crew because he knows he's about one turn away from having his first goal met because he's about to be solid with two contacts Womack is going to go ahead and take the full burn movement spend one fuel and all he has to do is go from Aphrodite to three hills to complete his second job for Amandua, which is to make him solid with two contacts we spent the fuel, we're going to move one space, and we're going to get a card that says keep flying or salvage op load two cargo full stop. We don't want to stop, so we're not going to load any cargo. We're going to keep on flying. We're going to take a second move, and this one says, ah, the Reaver Cutter has come to life. This card could not come at a worse time for Womack. He is about to get a lot of hurt. There's two options on this card. One, if you have a pilot and a mechanic, you can spend one fuel and evade the Reaver Cutter, and things won't be too bad for you. Unfortunately, poor Womack has a pilot, but no mechanic. The first thing that's going to happen is the Reaver is going to fly all the way over to go visit Womack and say a little bit of hello and a little bit of give me your crew. Now, here's the very bad thing for poor Womack. He had a ship full of a lot of passengers that he was supposed to be transporting. Remember, he was supposed to take each of his passengers for a nice pleasure cruise to Three Hills, and he happened to pick up five passengers for a nice pleasure cruise to go visit, and he's going to get $300 for each one of those passengers. Unfortunately, the Reavers decided that they thought the crew looked mighty tasty, so unfortunately it says, kill all passengers and fugitives aboard the ship. So all five of these passengers are going to be removed from poor Womack who now has to go pick up some more passengers if he wants to complete this job. Next thing that's going to happen is we have to do a fight test and I need to roll this, this the dice right here and then I need to get an 8 or higher. I got to add any fight I have to whatever I roll. Unfortunately, my pilot does not add any fight to me so all I got is one max bonus of two guns. So I'm going to roll and I'm going to 5 plus 1 plus 1 is 7 so I'm going to get a total of 7. On a roll of 1 to 7, kill 2 crew and evade. Well, you can't kill your captain, but I can definitely kill my pilot. Since he is killed, he's actually removed from the game. He's not going to be put back in the Space Bazaar draw pile. Unfortunately, this pilot is removed from the game. And since the captain can't actually be killed, but he can take damage, he's going to become disgruntled, which means he's mighty ticked off that he has got his whole crew torn apart by a reaver. The final thing does say here that we're going to evade, which means we have to move one space in any direction we want to, which will end our movement for this turn. So we could move over here to three hills, but that's not going to do us any good because we don't have any passengers to drop off. So we need to get some place that's going to be advantageous to us. So we're going to go ahead and move over here to Carrie right here, and hopefully we go to Regina or Niska next, but at least we're away from that cutter right now. The final thing that's going to happen with this card is going to say reshuffle the deck. So we're going to take the border space deck, all these cards, and we're going to go ahead and reshuffle it. So it's going to start all over again. And we get to start drawing more cards whenever we come through this deck. And that card is still in there too, so we may encounter it again. And unfortunately, there's not much Womack can do anymore. He's done a move action, so he can't move anymore. And he's on a planet where he can't really do anything. So the only thing he can do since he's on a planet with nothing to do is he can go ahead and wash dishes for $200, soak his misery, and end his turn. It's now Malcolm's turn, and all of a sudden the person playing Malcolm isn't too worried about falling too far behind the Womack player because the person playing Womack is going to have to be doing a lot of catch-up now. So we're going to go ahead and spend our first action shopping at Osiris. And there's three possible things that we see we can get. We can get an upgraded drive core, which sounds pretty darn decent. We can get a medic, and we can get a fully equipped medical bay. Those are decent cards, but none of those are really cards I'm really, really wanting. So I'm going to say no to all three of those cards. And I'm going to draw three cards from the deck. And we're going to see I get an expanded crew quarters, which allows me to get extra crew. Another expanded crew quarters, or fully equipped medical bay. It looks like I gambled, I lost. Nothing really cool came up, so... I don't think any of these cards are cards I really want right now. Especially looking at my funds. If I had more funds to waste, I'd probably be more interested. But nothing I really want. So we're just going to spend a few hundred dollars, get some fuel, 
because we only have twelve hundred dollars I will spend two hundred dollars get some fuel for our ship and then we're going to go ahead and take a fly action because we still need to head to hair to drop off and finish our job so we'll take a full burn action burn one fuel move one space get a car that says spend a cargo we don't have any disgruntled so we'll keep flying we'll move here and we'll get a salvage or keep flying we will decide to keep flying we'll move the last space and we'll get a rogue trader we can deal with it or we can become pirates we're not going to do either because neither option sounds really good right now we made it to our eventual goal and on our next turn we can go ahead and finish our first job that is two actions for the Malcolm player it's now back to Womack the Womack player is in a lot of trouble right now they can't finish this job right now that they have because they lost all their passengers the only way to get more passengers would be to go back to the space bazaar but you can only do that if you're solid with Amundul which conveniently that's the job I'm working on right now so it doesn't really help me right now and I can't get rid of that job because it's a job I've started so somehow this player has to manage to get solid with Amundul by doing other jobs pick up more crew use this job come all the way back over here to three sons to finish this job so that's kind of a difficulty this player is now dealing with additionally they need to find a way to get more crew because unfortunately right now it's just the captain he has nothing aboard his ship so this player has a lot of things they need to do they need to get a crew again they need to get back on the road start doing some jobs and try to recover from that very nasty cutter encounter while on the other hand the player playing malcolm is actually doing pretty decent as long as he can stay away from this reaver and as long as he can complete his two jobs, he's going to be able to complete his first goal and move on towards possibly winning the game. I think I'm giving you a pretty decent quick overview of how the game plays. You got to see a sample gameplay, see how the game actually works. I do want to show you how a misbehaving job works before I end this video. So I'm just going to fast forward a little bit and show you exactly how that works by using the Malcolm player. We're going to fast forward to the Malcolm player's turn and say that we happen to be over in Persephine and we want to go ahead and work this illegal job right here, which is Corporate Espionage Target Blue Sun. Now this job requires us to have two things before we insert this job. One, we need to have a hacking rig, which we know we have because we saw us getting that earlier. It requires a hacking rig. Additionally, we need at least two tech to at least start this job. We have the hacking rig and we have the two tech. So we can definitely do this job. All we have to do is be in the right location, perform a work action. It requires us to be in Persephine, in Lux, which we happen to be. So we're going to go ahead and spend a work action to go ahead and do this job. And this is a misbehaving job. So the way this works is we're going to spend a work action. We're going to flip over the top card of the misbehave deck and we get to choose which we want to do. There's two options here. The first one says if we have transport, we can load up three contraband and proceed. The other option is says for each crew on the job without gear, load one contraband and then proceed. Well, we have four crew members on the job. Three of them do not have any gear at all, so we're actually going to get three contraband. So we'll take three contraband and add that to our ship. So this is actually pretty darn nice. And we actually have room for the contraband. We'll go and stick that in our stash, and that's one misbehaving card taken care of. We have to complete three of them, though, so we go ahead and flip over the second one. And this says we have two options. It's the local law. So we have a run-in with the law. We can bribe them with money, or we can go ahead and fight it out. If we fight it out, we're going to look at our gun skill. If we want to go ahead and bribe them, we can try to go ahead and look at bribing. Now, unfortunately, bribing we're not really good with with our crew, because if we look at our crew, we see that Malcolm has one in bribe, Wash has one in bribe, but nobody else in our crew has anything good to help them with bribing. So we are going to go ahead and fight this out. We need to roll an eight or higher. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six guns. So as long as I don't roll a one, we're going to go ahead and succeed here. And I rolled a three, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we get an eight or higher, we're going to proceed. So that is two misbehaving cards down, one more to go. We'll flip over the next card, and it'll say that we have to keep a low profile. Two things we can do, we can try to talk our way out of it, or we can go ahead and fight our way out of it. I think we're going to go ahead and fight our way out of it. It's got a kosherized rules fight, which means we can't use weapons. Well, we're not using weapons anyway, so this is going to be pretty easy. I need to get a 6 or higher, and if I get a 1 through 5, I'm going to kill one of my crew members. We're going to go ahead and 
automatically succeed on this one because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus whatever I roll on the die for a total of 10. So that's going to succeed and it says to proceed. So now I have succeeded it with three misbehaving cards. All that I do is complete three misbehaving cards. So I have finished this job. It says misbehave to get paid. So I'm going to get paid $4,000. Minus 300, minus 200, minus 300, because I have to pay my crew, so I have to pay my crew $800. I'm going to pocket $3,200, and if I happen to have a grifter on my crew, which I don't, I have a soldier, a pilot, a merc, and a pilot soldier. If I had a grifter, I'd get an extra $500. So I'm going to be paid 4000 minus 800 $3,200, and I've completed this job, and now I'm solid with Niska. I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short right here. This is one of those games that has an ebb and a flow to it. It goes back and forth, back and forth, depending on the randomness and the luck of what's going to happen. You can be on top one moment and then be under the bad luck the next. You saw that with the Womack player, and all it took was one encounter at the wrong time with the Reaver Cutter. It's basically how the game can work, and I'll get into that when I talk about my review. I think I've shown you enough of the gameplay so you get an idea of how the game is played, what the game looks like when you play it, and see if the game is right for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, be sure to subscribe. Also be sure to watch my complete review of the game. This was a tutorial and sample gameplay video. I'm gonna load a second video which is gonna show you the component quality, how well the game plays with multiple player counts, and just how much I liked or disliked Serenity the board game. This has been another off the shelf tutorial video for Firefly the board game. Thanks for watching.